Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our panel, Radio Universe and the Rabbit Hole. I'm Sonic God. I'm DJ Blue. I'm Romeo Rabbit, your host and uh, DJ Rabbit Pop. I want to thank you guys for coming in here. Uh, this is kind of a spur of the moment. This occurred. I, I had to contact KPN trying to get this panel started. I, I knew it was going to be a little bit at first, but then it just kind of mushroomed after that. And Can't complete with typos. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm also on IRC, so I'm communicating to the people who weren't here. Uh, so you got Steel Wolf and Channel, Red Heretic and Channel, and all sorts of people. Ricochet's Howard. getting food, apparently. Uh, what's in the agenda? What are, what are we doing? Well, let's see. Uh, we're going to introduce ourselves. Also, we have our special guest, the musically inclined tiger, Bucktown Tiger. Bucktown Tiger. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Improv extraordinaire, Alkali. Yeah. And also from the Fun Day Puppet Show, Blitz. Blitz is here. I see people coming in the back. Please Hi, come, come sit. In. Have a seat. We are just getting started. Don't Normally be shy. You don't need a super sponsor membership to sit up front. If you want to sit up front, please do so. Be comfortable. Be happy. Yeah. No, we're really tiny and we fit in your computer, but you can actually see us now, which is kind of cool. <laughs> we're actually uh, in front of people and not uh, behind a computer monitor now. This, this is also the first time all three of us are together in front of a mic, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, so How long have we been doing this together? Like three years? Yeah, three, four years. Uh, I lost track. Romeo, you've been doing this for about two years? I've been doing years. the rabbit hole for four years, four years. Uh, in a couple of weeks, actually, right at the end of July. Uh, it'll be the fourth anniversary of my show, uh, The Rabbit Hole. It airs after theirs. It airs after Radio Universe and the Fun Day Poppet Show, which uh, our, our guest here, uh, Blitz, uh, stars in. I think that's a train. That's not microphone feedback. No, no, okay. no. Yeah. Blitz, uh, thanks for, for all for coming. I was absolutely just floored with how busy it was. Uh, we had some registration delays. I want to just kind of mention this real briefly. What happened, uh, a couple different things, but the main thing was we had some new hardware at the registration desk, new badge printers, old software, and we're trying to make new and old talk to each other. And sometimes when you got little kids and elderly, they don't like to talk to each other. So we're it's having a, fun with that. It's like a two-year-old with ADD. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's like um, old registration system. We need to make this work and this work, and these numbers have to do this and that. And the badge printer's like, I can count a potato. <laughs> well, moral of the story is, if at first you don't succeed, skydiving's not for you. <laughs> I also want to mention uh, to everybody that's actually here right now, I am holding in my hand... A signed copy of Fox and Moore's Come Find Me. He, de he debuted this uh, at AnthroCon in the uh, Spirit of Pittsburgh Ballroom uh, on 4th of July. Uh, and uh, it is signed by him. It is signed by Amadia and, uh, and, and one other gentleman. Um, I'm not, forgive me, I'm not aware of his name. Uh, maybe we can find it. We can find it. But uh, he, was a, uh, he was the violinist. Um, on, the sta on the stage uh, when they debuted Come Find Me. He was the one that played the uh, violin. Yeah, the, the music is absolutely beautiful. If you guys haven't had a chance to listen to it, uh, do so. Hey, those in the back, come have a seat. Come Welcome. Up. Come up. Don't be shy. We may or may not interview you. We love our attendees. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so Fox and Moore, I, I managed to get a chance to meet the guy. He is an absolute much. gentleman, uh, terrific pianist, uh, bubbly personality. The guy really likes Guinness. Yes, yes. Yeah, he really loves Guinness beer. He's also so. Scottish. He's also Scottish. Scottish. I, I don't think I can do a Scottish accent very well. I, I suck. I lost my Mad Libs for later. <laughs> I have to find another one. Yeah, but uh, yes, it, it is signed by Fox Amore and Amadia, and it is signed by Alexander James Adams as well, uh, who also, the, all three worked on the album together. Um, there were more people that worked on the album. They were not in attendance uh, this weekend, so uh, I couldn't get them to sign it. But uh, all the people who uh, worked on the album that were here, I did have them sign it. And if you donate uh, to uh, the raffle, you will get a raffle ticket. And it doesn't matter what the amount is, you're in the running. And you, what's some, one, I hope one person will walk out of here with, uh, with a copy of Fox and Morse Come Find Me Sign today. Yep. So how, how many folks had a chance to listen to Rhubarb and Fox and Moore and folks uh, doing the jazz session last night? Hey, was anybody out there for that? You were sleeping? Yeah, you were yeah sleeping. I, don't, I took a nap beforehand so I can go. Yeah, it went about until 1 in the morning, but um, I, I did record some video of that. And, uh, I just 
Absolutely. Yeah. Do you got some photos of that? I do. Pop them up on the screen I there. I also have the cheats for the uh, karaoke fee later. Yeah. So, oh, man. I, 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 Rhubarb the Bear and Fox Moore, they, man, their music styles you know, are, are so different from each other. Yet, at the same time, when, when you put those two together, they just, the, the synergy was amazing. I, I couldn't, oh, man. It just blew my mind. I took way too many photos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the Anthrocon. I was at the Anthrocon Tonight Show. It was absolutely amazing. In fact, I was very impressed by the audio video department of Anthrocon and how they handled their setup and the cameras and uh, and the the drone. Did anybody see the drone? Oh yeah. Oh, that's a was a James. No, that no. He he wasn't on drums. In fact, I'm not sure who was on drums. Yeah, I didn't know who he was either. I. I'm, Please come have a seat. Welcome to the show. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to play just a little segment of this because this is what I recorded last night from this jazz session. Um, rhubarb was amazing on bass. There was one brief moment where Fox and Moore took the bass and Rhubarb took the keyboard. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to find. I, I never thought I'd see Fox on a, on a bass guitar. Uh, let's see if I can play this over the microphone oh, just briefly. Uh, maybe, do I have volume? <laughs> this is what was going on. Just amazing music. I, I absolutely And uh, Fox and Moore and Rhubarb work so well together. And you throw Amadia in there, and they could start. Amadi, yeah, they could start their own, they could start their own furry super group. They were trying to come up with a name, but it all came up with like, yeah. So I thought I had to play some of that. Just incredible music. If you haven't had a chance, um, go out, check their table at the uh, dealer's area. I think dealer's is supposed to be open until 4 today. Yes, yes. 4, 4 p.m., you can go out and get a CD. You'll have about an hour after the show to, to run out there and go buy his stuff. It's just amazing. And if you didn't have a chance to see it, this is a very, very low res version. I'm trying to get my... Yeah, this here. this is the first two parade photos. Uh, we had 1,326 fursuiters in this photo, shattering our previous record. It's like the, the whole thing with the Guinness World Records coming out and saying we had 1,100 people and like, oh, we got 1,326 people now. I'm like, holy smokes. And these fursuits aren't cheap. The majority of these are a thousand bucks or more. So you're looking at a picture that's potentially about 1.3, 1.4 million dollars. Yeah, I heard. Total value. I heard somebody say the million dollar photo, and now I know why. From like three years ago, it's like a million point five now. No. Yeah. <laughs> Some fursuits I, I've seen cost uh, in the five thousand dollar range. I don't think that's um, a fursuit anymore. Well, uh, yeah. It's uh, like a car. One of the most complex suits I've, I've seen was $22,000. Oh, what was that? Uh, it, it was a lot of mechanical work. There was actually computer chips and micro stuff and, um, you know, all sorts of moving parts and LEDs all over the body. It was just insane. I, I wish I had grabbed the photo of it. There's just tons of creativity um, in this fandom, tons of talent, gallons oh, yeah. upon gallons of talent. And this is my first Anthrocon. I've never been to Anthrocon before, ever. So for me, walking in and seeing all the musicians and even the even the talent of the staff of Anthrocon, this is a well-oiled machine. Everybody knows what they're doing. Everybody knows where they have to be, and uh, it's just I'm I'm so impressed and so in awe of everything that's been that's that I've seen this weekend. And uh, I, if I can get a chance to come back to Anthrocon again, you bet I will. I, Look, I, I was actually walking out on the streets of uh, Pittsburgh and looking up at all the skyscrapers. Has your neck finally stopped hurting? Because I figured by the time he got here, he's from the land of three-story buildings, so he'd be like this the whole time. <laughs> I'm from the land of Florida, where it's all flat and there are no hills or mountains or, or you peaks. You fire ants and hurricanes. Uh, hurricanes and heat and humidity and bugs and... and tourists who can't drive. Yes. Love bugs, and yeah. What? yeah well, there's plenty of those out there. Armadillos. We, hey, we saw hey, some Blitz, do you have a pet, arm, pet armadillo? No, those things are bad. Really? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what? Armadillos bite? Oh, dear. Oh, my God. Ooh, there you, that's yeah. it. Don't they hook and eat armadillos down south? 
I've never seen it happen, that but will I would not wouldn't... be on Spitzer's walls. So no, 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 no. I've Sorry. never seen it happen personally, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no. They probably do do it. Just uh, piggybacking off of Romeo's comment, uh, I got to give thanks to a lot of the staff and the volunteers that work so very hard for this con. I've come across one technical situation after another that has just made me burst at the seams, and a splitting headache was the result. Um, but still, we managed to work so very hard and make things work in registration dealers and programming and all these people work very hard. If you volunteered or staffed, we couldn't do it without you. I can't thank you enough. You guys are just amazing. Uh, yeah, so love you guys. Love you so much. And I, I made a comment during open ceremonies and I, I think this is true. People don't go to Anthrocon to go on vacation. They go to Anthrocon to come home because here it's in my personal belief that we're friends and family here. This is our family. We're just one big pile of furry goodness. And it's I, like the weirdest family reunion I've ever had, but it's yeah. pretty awesome. Cool. So, I mean, you guys it's agree with it. that? No, I, I think this place is home. Thank you. The drinking's probably more interesting than most weddings. What's that? The drinking's probably more interesting than most weddings. <laughs> Way right more. Right, alcohol? I'm not drunk. <laughs> um, I can't. I can't release the final registration numbers right now, but last year's numbers was 5,577. We have surpassed that by a nice chunk. So uh, if you guys come to closing ceremonies, you'll get, you'll get to uh, hear those final numbers. I'm, I'm actually pretty actually, excited. Actually, isn't the two in Kagi show right before opening ceremonies? <laughs> uh, before I mean closing, closing sorry. Closing <laughs> yes. Um, uh, two in Kage get together. If you guys have gone to the National Aviary's table and saw the really cute penguins, if you donate 10 bucks, they'll give you one of these green cards here. I kind of show it in my wallet. Uh, that will get you access to that panel. It's basically, they get up on stage, there's booze, they get drunk, and they talk about random things. And then he has closing ceremonies right yeah. after. I shouldn't stand this close to the mic. Right. I was right. talking to Justin yesterday. <laughs> He's like, I got to meet Jim Cummings and Lee Tucker in the dark touching penguins. Yeah, it, it was the funniest thing. <laughs> my uh, first time I ever met Jim Cummings, and I... I He's a, I'm a big fan of his, in, in, you know, in the most subtle way I could. Here we are behind stage in the dark, and I'm petting a penguin, and Lee's standing to the left of me, and Jim's standing to the right of me, and like, this is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. Was it good for you? It was very good for me. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, I'm, <laughs> I might as well do this now. Um, I did get... Oh it, yeah, play that. Play yeah, that. I did get a bumper from Mr. Cummings, and Go ahead, uh, play it, it was very awesome yeah. of him to do this. Yes. And I got to meet him. I got to shake his hand, and uh, um, yeah. I was a Disney Afternoon kid when I was young. How many of you were? Oh man, love Disney Afternoon. I, I love Darkwing Duck. I love Ducktales. I love Tailspin. Like every afternoon when I got home from school, I would literally watch the Disney Afternoon block. Every afternoon. Hey, my my favorite from Tailspin was Don Carnage. Who loves Don Carnage? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I wish I could replicate that voice. I can't. He, yeah. Oh, I don't it, sound as eccentric. It, it's 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 like one, huh? I, I can just see the little kid voices. That's it. <laughs> Great villain. Great yeah, Don, villain. Don Carnage is like one of those voices where you. Is that a train? Oh god, I think that's a train. They that's, found us. They found. Oh no! <laughs> it's it's one of those voices where you start hearing Don Carnage and you, and you get this tickle in the pit of your stomach, I'm like, I love this voice so much. So apparently, your ticket voucher is good for recordings. We thought it was just autographs and. Photos. Yeah, here's here's the cool part. So. Here. Yeah, here's the cool part. I, I made I made the mistake of thinking I would have to pay Jim Cummings to get a bumper for my show, uh, The Rabbit Hole, which of course airs after Radio Universe on Sunday nights. Um, but uh, I was very pleasantly surprised to find out that the voucher was good for a voice recording from Mr. Cummings. So I was able to get um, a uh, recording from him for my show, The Rabbit Hole. Let me see if I can play this here. Go ahead. Hello, citizens. Darkwing Duck here, letting you know that it's time to tune in to the one and only The Rabbit Hole with my main man, Romeo Rabbit. Take it away, Double R. Oh, 
and I, I did also happen to get um, a couple of bumpers from uh, Jim Martin, uh, the voice of Gary Ganu as well. He was a uh, guest of honor at AnthroCon? Yes, he was a guest of honor, I think, in 2012. Also, the uh, one of the folks involved with the Toonzeem in the past, um, friends with him. We were over in the uh, bird drawing panel. He was over there, and his wife, Crystal, if you go into the art show, she made these cool-looking Christmas ornaments that look like cats, and uh, we, we asked him if he could record a bumper. And he did uh, he did many uh, takes for me, but yeah, I'll I'll, maybe the last two. I'll just sample some yeah, for for everybody out there here. I have a photo somewhere. Three, two, one. Well, hello there. This is Gary Gnu. When I want to get cool and groovy, I hang out at the rabbit hole with DJ Romeo Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. <laughs> I got it. Absolutely so great. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, it was very, more. Just, very you know, boomy. Just give me a chance to think of silly things, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Three, I, I got to hit it. Two, Jim Warren. He's just. Well, awesome. hello there. This is Gary Gnu. Let's get down to the rabbit hole with DJ Romeo Rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. This was them yesterday in the room. Yeah. I, I think we just kind of went down the hall on the third floor. Jim Martin has to be one of the nicest people I've ever met. Him and his wife, Crystal, just, oh. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're so sweet. I, I, I love having them back. Uh, this is like, what, the third year in here now? Fourth? I think it's fourth. It's four, fourth year they have come back. It's, it just, it, it's a sign of the, the things that Anthrocon is about. And, you know, and, he, and Jim is a local here, too. So it's like, well, why not? If you haven't checked it out yet, check out the Toonzeum that he runs. It's right off of, what, uh, Liberty Avenue? Uh, yeah, you just go have Liber Liberty, and then you can go get a list on your wrap yeah. at Fernando's. Oh, wait a minute. You, I've got to stop you there, because what? I have never had uh, a lasagna wrap at Fernando's until this week. It, it's got little bits of crack in it. <laughs> Every, I, I, I've always heard people rave and, and talk about uh, and compliment uh, the Fernando's lasagna wrap, and I've never had the chance to have one. And uh, Sana got uh, Justin and uh, Erica and myself went down to Fernando's, uh, I think uh, the first day I arrived in Pittsburgh, and we had a, a lasagna wrap, and it was very, it was just as good as everybody says it is. Oh, man, I, I drool over that thing. Every, every year that I come here, I've got to go to Fernando's, I've got to get a lasagna wrap. Matter of fact, um, I there, got... He's not paying me to say that. No, either. no, not at all. Matter of fact, I got a, uh, a dog bowl from Fernando, and uh, we are giving away uh, last year's uh, dog bowl from Fernando's. We have one of those to give away, uh, okay. as well as uh, yeah, Fox and More CD. Actually, this is one of the coolest things. I was in CVS. I got right. a bunch what of these. What is that? I know, it's like, you like this one? But yeah, this is last year's dog bowl. They have these red paw shaped ones. Nice. Oh, man. So there are all sorts of stuff back here. There are prizes to be had. Oh, God, this. <gasps> this. Also, I put all the uh, giveaway stuff with this, and now everything smells like Lucky Charms. It's like a waft. I, I can explain Lucky that. You uh, should. Please explain why I have a uh, Lucky Charms. My right friend, here. Mandy Tiger, she's a uh, sweetheart, and... I had made a comment on Funday Poppet show. I said, if, if, oops, uh, when, when, I'm going to try, let's uh, back up, try again. If Captain Crunch can have a cereal called Oops All Berries, then Lucky Charms can have a cereal called Oops All Marshmallows. That's what this is. It is a bag of marshmallows from Lucky Charms. <laughs> She separated it out for me and gave me the bag, and I'm like, she gave, she gave you the. Painstakingly went little by little, like when I took all the uh, I, years ago, I gave this to Fun Day. I took all the good flavored um, jelly beans, the Harry Potter ones, out and just sent you all the really weird ones, oh, like grass so cool. and. <laughs> we don't. We don't have any milk here, do we? No, no, we have water. But she gave you the good part of the cereal. Nom, nom, no. You gotta eat them now. Just, yeah. do, just do this. Just out. hold the bag up above your head and just. Does anybody want some? <laughs> <laughs> I oh, think God. we choose the werewolf. Um, <laughs> wine and cereal. Oh, you want some? Yeah, come on up, Blitz. Come on up. Um, come on down. Word of, ca word of caution: it's, uh, they're a little mushy because the uh, the moisture in the air or something. Yeah. The humidity in the entire yeah. hotel. It will be a little mushy. They're, they're still good though. 
Sure. You want some saw blade? Oh, you know me, Victor. This is saw blade, the, the resident hawk. Victor Red Tail. And I have to watch my uh, my backside. He is a red tailed hawk, so and I'm a rabbit, so Does anybody it's... want to jack that in? <laughs> uh, is is that side is this speaker working over here? You? I, yes. Uh, I guess so. Uh, yeah. they still got one, one thing that's working. <laughs> She's plugging stuff in. She's playing with the cables. If the lights go out, don't panic. You know, I, I wanted to do voice acting years ago. Uh, who, is, who is a big fan of the Lion King out there? You are? You, you are? I love the Lion King. When, when I had, um, had this big fascination, like, you know, God, can, do you realize that the Lion King is 20 years old now as of this year? Uh, I feel old. It came out in 1994. They started production in 1991. Jim Cummings played Ed the Hyena. You guys know. And they hire a voice actor. Well, what does that do? Oh, oh, all he does is just laugh. Okay. Um, that's, that's what he said. A uh, little bit of trivia that uh, during the song, Be Prepared, because Jeremy Irons, I guess, is a big smoker or whatnot. And yeah. His, he wasn't a singer. He, he, he spoke the first lines, I never thought hyenas essential, they were crude and unspeakably plain, or something like that. And then he just couldn't sing. So Jim Cummings stepped in and sang the entire song for Be Prepared. That was Jim Cummings. So if you ever, ever hear that, just thank him for that, because he, he put in his voice for that. I... I Jeremy Irons' voice is so raspy, it's like, deep down in your throat or, or something like that. For every pack of cigarettes he smoked. You can hear, I think, I think Mr. Cummings said, you can hear every pack of cigarettes. I know that her powers of retention are as what are as warthogs backside. But thick as you are, pay attention. My words are a matter of pride. It's clear from your vacant expressions. The lights are not all on upstairs. But we're talking kings and successions. Even you can't be caught unawares. Very nice. Right. That is a very good impersonation. Very good impression. Speaking of songs, I think we're going to I think I think we're ready for Bucktown Tiger. Woo! Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Play it, Bucktown. Let's see. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hey, hey. He's playing it. Oh, very cool. Hey, Justin, sing along. Oh, I can't do it. Huh? You gotta sing along. Yeah. All right. Go for it. I know that your powers of retention are as wet as a warthog's backside. But thick as you are, pay attention. My words are a matter of pride. It's clear from your vacant expressions. The lights are not all on upstairs, but we're talking kings and successions. Even you can't be caught unawares. So prepare for the chance of a lifetime. Be prepared for sensational news. A shining new era is tiptoeing nearer. And where do we feature? Just listen to teacher. I know it sounds sordid, but he will be rewarded when at last I am given my dues. And then justice deliciously squared. Be prepared. That is so hard to throw. <laughs> Alright. Oh man. Bucktown Tiger, you're, you're an amazing pianist, dude. Love this number. Give a hand to Bucktown Give Tiger. Give a hand to Bucktown Tiger, the keyboard cat himself. Throwing marshmallows like an idiot. <laughs> one went somewhere. I think it went, yeah, it's behind the chair. God bless you.
Bucktown Tiger. Thank you, Bucktown Tiger. That was just amazing. Justin, do you want to take over this last half of the next section? Um, sure, I, I can do that. We'll swap places here. Swap seats. Swap seats. Ooh. Oh, man. All right. How many of you guys uh, have ever visited Fail Block? You guys know about Fail Block and the Cheeseburger Network? I love that website. It reminds me of how smart I think I am. Or, anyway. I don't know what's going on with the e-movers. There, there are stupid people in this world, and then there are people I wonder how they're even allowed to procreate. It's... There's some special stuff. Do you have it on the computer here? Yeah, some of these are not displaying. I apologize. The, the fail blog is failing. <laughs> that, that, that's uh, ironic that the fail blog is failing. All right, so you just click on the uh, So they, they can see it up on the screen there? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Hey, why don't you glass of water here, too? No, you can have Oh, thanks. Anyway, so I'm going up through this stuff here. This, uh, my God. I don't know what this is, some little, uh, my little pony knockoff, and it's just the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Somebody please explain to me what the hell a kid would want this for. I poop rainbows? Really? <laughs> what? Uh, that's, uh, they make the strangest toys. I don't get it. Um, let's see, second thing here, this is kind of creepy. La 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 Anybody who's a fan of Skyrim, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, this one is going to be a little bit difficult. Um, oh. What's going on here? I hate PCs. Oh, there we go. Is there a way? Okay, I can do that, but can I scroll this up and down? Is there a way to scroll through the image? No. Uh, what? Yeah. Well, let's click. Okay. Uh, I hate PCs. You can tell that Justin is a Mac person. I, I am an Apple person. I, I like I like my computer simple. There you go. You got it. These are like medical issues that people have had. I'll probably just read a few of them. Uh, it's the 15 dumbest patients that doctors have had to deal with. Faith in humanity lost. Number one, I'm never going to have a baby because the hospitals don't wash them anymore. She's 30. Yeah, I'm disturbed by that. Number two, I once had a 20-year-old female patient who didn't know that having sex would lead to pregnancy. She had no idea. Okay. Number three, after looking at the patient's chart and seeing she had diabetes, me, do you have any medical conditions? Patient, no. Are you sure you've never been, you never told you had any disease? Never. What medications do you take? Insulin for my diabetes. <laughs> okay. A middle-aged lady in the operating theater once told us that the last minute as she was being wheeled in that she's allergic to latex. Everyone freaks out because uh, so much of the stuff we use in the theater has latex in it, so we take her to latex-free theater and do her surgery there. When she's in recovery and awake, and I inquire as to what reaction she has to latex, I just don't really like the sound of latex gloves make, dear. I just turned around and walked out. <laughs> Number five, quote, no, my fiancé and I don't want our daughter to have any of the vaccines, vitamin K shot, antibiotic ointment, or PKU testing. It's poison. Poking her with a needle is worse than the cold she get without the poison. He then drove his newborn daughter and fiancé home in a car that absolutely reeked of weed and cigarettes. 20-year-old <laughs> nice. something patient comes to the ER. Chief complaint on the board is private. This should be good. Go in. He is visibly depressed and sad. Tells a story about how he slept with a woman, didn't use protection, and after he noticed she had a plastic box on her. When she told him it was an insulin pump for her diabetes, he was mortified. Came in immediately to be tested for diabetes. <laughs> these these get worse, trust me. I, I'm sensing a diabetes theme here. I had asthma when I was a child, so stop blank patronizing me and telling me how to raise my daughter just because you think you're smarter than me. Leaves hospital. 
Back in hospital two hours later, six-year-old daughter with respiratory failure admitted to ICU. Wow. These people are stupid. Don't eat or drink anything after midnight before his three-year-old daughter surgery in the next morning. Tonsils and uh, adenoids. While intubating his doctor the next morning, she vomited scrambled eggs, causing her to aspirate them into her lungs. Her heart stopped. I did chest compressions on her for 25 minutes. We got back, aborted the surgery, transferred her to pe uh, pediatric ICU in the ventilator. Her father's response, she said she was hungry. I thought you were being too hard on her. It must have been something you did to her. Wow. <laughs> These are actual stories, and that's what scares me. Patient had been told that the reason her son was getting sick at school every day was because she was packing him with peanut butter and sandwiches, and he was allergic to peanuts. Oh. She honestly didn't know that it was an ingredient, and he was in middle school and wasn't bright enough to realize it himself. Had a lady measure her ba uh, baby's temperature by preheating the oven and putting one hand in front of it while the other hand was on the baby's forehead. She told the nurse her baby's fever was about 250 degrees. After 110, you're, you're dead. <laughs> All right. The best was the woman who was feeding her three-month-old dog every few days for no other reason than she thought a dog should eat only that often. Came in for hypoglycemia, of course. The nurse who spoke with her has no patience for this kind of jacked ignorance and actually shouted at her, Do you eat every three days? So bad. So bad. Once had a patient who was prescribed an inhaler for his cat allergy. It came back a week later saying he was none the better. Turns out he was spraying the inhaler on his cat. Yeah. What? Oh, so bad. Just so bad. My favorite was when was prescribed estrogen patches and told to stick one patch on herself every other day. At the next follow-up, she said she didn't like the patches because she'd been running out of space. I didn't think to clarify to her that she would have been placing a new patch and removing the one from yesterday each day. Very amusing. She uh, indeed was covered in sticky patches. Why? <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> Mom brought her kids to the ER after they ate all of their Halloween candy because they had tummy aches. They were still eating Reese's peanut butter cups when they were in the exam room. I had to explain to her that they need to cut back on the candy, and she looked like at me that I had three heads. <laughs> oh, this is, this is, uh, well. There was this lady who had diabetes, and her foot was necrotic. The doctor told her she was going to have to have it amputated, and she said... No, Jesus will heal it for me, or something like that. The doctor looked at her and said, Ma'am, you have maggots eating your foot. Jesus wants you to get it amputated. Huh. Oh, so bad. All right. Um, there's a couple wins, a couple fails here. I'm going to go through these real quick. An ATAT -AT cloud. Love that one. Someone managed to find that. You can uh, it here. Um, China likes to... You click the image, there's a little thing... Uh, okay, so we're, we'll full. What's the the be, 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 be? Yeah. All right, maybe I should just. Uh, okay, well let's let's see what happens if I. I hate Windows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's a Mac guy. <laughs> uh, well, let's see what happens when we do this here. There you go. China tends to get things wrong a lot. I'm just gonna read this really quickly. The Avengers is the best superheroes movie of all time. Anthony Lane, New Yorker. Captain America in Frozen a few years later, wake up. The world is not what he used to familiar appearance. Various types of evil opponent to emerge in an endless stream. The whole society turbulent. She relies on a person's power, is unable to save the world. So, United States of America, Captain, Iron Man, Thor, the Hulk, <coughs> and other superheroes all together, consisting of the history of the most powerful Avengers team, the common good and evil fighting for peace. Stocks come unexpectedly powerful evil forces on Earth caused a deadly threat. No AS Uber hero alone <laughs> can resist. Long-term commitment to protecting the global safety shield board. Shield, what the hell? <laughs> Was the commander to be taken by surprise the one-eyed man Nick Fiery realizes he must blank, blank, blank. 
The English is so bad. How do these people screw this up? So it's I, like translate.google, you put it in, then you retranslate it, and you end up with that. Oh, God. Chinglish. Chinglish, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that should be the official release. I would watch it more. I don't recall what these the are. Heck is that? It's it's a Hobbit book oh, selling, so. and they have it stacked oh, up into the Eye of Sauron. Cool. Okay. I thought that. Why was is it cool. in there? That's actually cool. I wish I could make this bigger. I apologize. Yeah, that's we, that's. We that's only able to make you go back. That's one of the wins. Yeah, that's that. This is a win. I think that's cool. Um, this one. This is not how to pack your cat. <laughs> For the people who can't quite see that, could you describe it? Um, the cat is yeah, in the in. clear plastic in. backpack. I am worried that the cat is unable to breathe. <laughs> what the hell, people? <laughs> um, I, I guess I'll call this a win for cosplay, but these uh, dwarves, or little people, as they Aww. like to be called, are dressed up as Chucky and the Bride of Chucky. That's not Peter Dinkley, right? Dinklage. I don't know. Dinklage. <laughs> it's Dinklage, isn't it? Dinklage. Yeah. Dinklage, Dinklage. yep. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think that's him. He was amazing. If you guys had seen the most recent X Men movie, that, that was everything really good. looks kind of squished. From here. All right. <laughs> Corridor lock. Green equals open. Red equals locked. You probably can't see these if you can read this, and it's got a Braille sign on it. How do you describe the difference between two colors to a blind person who has never seen color in any all of their life? So I don't get it. Um, this is not how to love your cat. <laughs> Cat nom. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry about the small text here. Um, my mother called me today. This is a Facebook post. She put my youngest sister on the phone. Tell your big sister what you told me earlier today, she says. My baby sister replies, Mommy told me to clean my room today. Oh, yeah? Did you give her a hard time? I say. Well, she begins as a matter of factly. I told her that the entropy says that the universe is moving toward a more disordered state. Disorder means messy. If the universe is messy and breaking the rules is wrong, then breaking the universal rules is wrong too. Mommy wanted me to break the rules of the universe. Where did you learn this? You and Daddy were talking about science. She's only nine. She's going to be smarter than me. The heck? Dog decides, hey, my new iPhone is a toy. <laughs> it's a chew toy. The iPhone was completely ripped apart. That's like a... The dog looks so happy. He's probably tired of hearing the ringing noise. Yeah. I bought you something. You just need an apple. I wanted to do this. Uh, Matt Stoney did this. Uh, Matt Stoney's a uh, competitive eater, by the way. He took all of the, uh, the white stuffing between all the oh. Oreos off the Oreo and made one giant sandwich cookie. You said I could only have one cookie. This is one cookie. I would totally eat that. Uh, we saw that already. <laughs> <laughs> Warning, oil splashes can burn and disfigure. Then no one will love you and you will die lonely. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Lift with your knees and not your back. Your knees are loving and kind. Your back is spiteful and full of hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many people can read this? Oh, I'm going to give you guys a guess. Uh, yes. You think you got it? You know what that says? Correct. There you go. Well done. <laughs> All right. Swimming notice. Minnesota state law strictly prohibits underwater smoking. If you could accomplish underwater smoking, I want to know how. Can you do that with an e-stick? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Win and fail. Just take, take a good close look at this. I'm confused. I, have, I apologize if this image is small. I'm going to see you if can I can... zoom in on it if you go on the left. Yeah, if, uh, no, oh, whoa. 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 Let's try. Extreme close up. <laughs> it, it, everything kind of looks squared. <laughs> Hey, take a look at what I got. Eight point buck and Cougar's like, oh, I'm gonna take oh, that. Oh, oh, okay, I see. See the Cougar in the background here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Uh, this is like oh, some really awesome. cool uh, painting of a smart car. Someone <laughs> decided their car is a little text. There was a, a Doctor Who cosplayer who actually had like a Scion or something parked out in front of Tonic. Oh, yeah. That I was that. painted like the Doctor Who uh, uh, TARDIS box. I thought that was pretty cool too. I should have gotten a picture of that, but I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> what the hell? This this is what happens when autocorrect screws up a lot. Hey, Mommy, do you like your new iPhone? I love mine. Hey, Dingleberry. Yeah, it's Gret. I lobster all the fetish. <laughs> Much llamas to you from Dab. Mom? Oops, how do I tell off erection? How do I tell off autocorrect? How do I tell off an autocorrection? <laughs> <laughs> lobster all the fetish. <laughs> Whatever that means. I should play rock lobster, though. I don't have no, 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 no. <laughs> you? I don't. Now, this is a really cool win. Take a look at this. And sometimes we'll get like the youngest cosplayers who like to play as the Disney princesses at the Walt Disney World. This would be a man that loves going to work and does not dread it the night before. Upon entering the Magic Kingdom, one of the security guards said to this girl, Excuse me, princess, can I have your autograph? I could see that book was filled with children's scribbles, and the guard asked the same question of many little princesses. The little girl could not get over the fact that a guard thought she was a real princess. That's a win. Love that. All right. Next one. Um, <laughs> some guy who realizes uh, his own stupidity here. There's a picture. Why do you have a framed picture of your ceiling fan? <laughs> dot, dot, dot. I realize it's a mirror. <laughs> <Oops. laughs> Alright. Uh most epic nerf cosplay ever. Oh, let's see if I can blow this up just a tad. Is that a transform? No, it's it's a guy with every single nerf gun possible. <laughs> yeah. It's like a freaking arsenal. <laughs> oh man. So bad. A you guys can arsenal. move up closer if you want. This Come is cool. This. I want to do this in my next house if I ever get a house. They take pennies and they line the floor with pennies. Cheapest floor tile ever, and it will last forever. Welcome, guys. Come have a seat. This is really cool. Um, That's actually they, kind of a neat idea. I think they covered it in lacquer or something like that. It would. Yeah, that's kind of cool. All right, so next here. Elect Amy Frey for mayor. Puppies, beer, happiness, sex, rainbows. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is the best <laughs> political sign ever. <laughs> All right. Puppies and sex. Puppies and sex. It's a fur con. But no penguins. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. I love this one. Former Army Boxing Champion 71. Floor six foot four thug half his age after being punched in the face in an attack. A six foot four inch thug who attacked a man more than twice his age was left with a dislocated shoulder after the pensioner floored him with two right hooks. Former Army boxing champion John Coakley said Mark Pierce picked on the wrong man. The 71 year old was at home watching TV in his slippers when he heard Pierce rolling with a neighbor. Don't mess with the army or any retired army guy. I don't I think we saw that. So what did you guys think of that? Oh, man, I love fail blocks so much. Um, oh. Let's see. We we missed one of these. Here we go. I actually kind of have a real-life fail blog. So I was in um, – actually, go ahead and wrap yeah, it up. Yeah. This is a cake <laughs> with a turd on it covered in <laughs> flies. And, no, that's all fake. That That's actually brown frosting. That was – <laughs> Japan. What can I say? Yeah. Oh man. Um. This is logical. Purr. A cat noise. Gato. Spanish for cat. Purgatory. An infinite realm of happy Spanish cats. <laughs> all right. That's where we're all going. Positioning people. Positioning. Know where your stuff is at. I'll let, I'll let that one sink in. Um, it is called a chemistry, and I want to get one of these for Uncle Kage next Christmas. Chemistry. Nice. Get it? Chemistry? Yeah. This is... Oh, God. Oh, this, this one. <laughs> um, 
Working people frequently ask retired people what they do to make their days interesting. Well, for example, the other day, Mary and my wife and I went into town and visited a shop. When we came out, there was a cop writing out a parking ticket. We went up to him and I said, Come on, man, how about giving a senior citizen a break? He ignored us and continued writing the ticket. I called him an a-hole. He glared at me and started writing another ticket, having worn out tires. So Mary called him a head. He finished the second ticket and put it on the windshield of the first. He then started writing more tickets. This went on for about 20 minutes. The more we abused him, the more tickets he wrote. Just then, our bus arrived, and we got on it and went home. <laughs> we try to have a little fun each day now that we're retired. It's important at our age. Oh, what an ass. Yeah. Windows photo viewer can't open this picture because the file appears to be damaged, corrupted, or is too large. Oh, curse you, ever. Windows. Yeah, no kidding. Windows fail. All right, so, dang it. Ah, oh, my God. I, I would have brought more, but we don't want to eat up too much That's time with that. Yeah. Oh, so cool stuff. Yeah, so uh, I had a real life fail blog happen. I went into a uh, Joanne Fabrics fabric store, and um, in the checkout line, they had an interesting toy. A lot of t toys where you can wind it up and it'll distribute candy. This was Princess Pooper. This is an actual thing. So I went there, and there was a seven year old who was like, Mommy, can I have this? So I told his mother, I was like, remember, when he goes off to college, you can tell him you wanted the pooping princess. This was, I don't know, it's a random weird thing. I wish I had a picture of it, but it's on the internet. Oh, where is, are we connected? I, yeah, I can't bring it up. No. no. We're, we're not connected, unfortunately. Boomer. Yeah. Boomer. So uh, I'm going to jump off on my laptop for a sec. Oh, man. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, and I will move over here. Open up the file. Justin's going to blow his nose. <laughs> Well, you got a fur kind, you're going to have allergies. That's, that's all there is to it. Yep. So, um, I think we're going to have a... Spe despite not having working internet, Skype is strangely working. So Sky How the heck do we yeah. get Skype working? I don't know. It just, that part uh, of the internet stay on, so well, every, Skype. Yeah, that part works. Yeah, everybody... Know, the web browser somehow is not working, but Skype is working. Everybody has a smartphone with Skype on it, don't they? Yeah, we're supposed to have a special guest call in. Oh, my God. So that's going to happen really? soon. See, uh, after Microsoft buys things out, it usually stops working. So I'm kind of surprised at this. Oh. Are we getting a call? Yeah. A oh. uh, what? Yeah, oh my oh, god, Oprah. Oprah. Really? Oprah, how are you doing? Oh, I'm feeling fat and sassy today. Oh my god. I'm going through a sex change operation. I just must say, having a penis finally is wonderful. I'm canceling O and making it O. Are you also at the Anthrocon? <laughs> My dear, you seem to be hyperventilating a bit. So, Oprah, where are you currently? Currently, I'm in a room with seven furries, three dogs, a cat, and a horse that has a strange erection tied into a bow around my leg. I call him Naughty. <laughs> are you in room 366? No, 666. It's the good room. Oh, okay. Off the pop by there. I'll have to pop by there after the show. Oh, honey, if you pop by, you'll pop a few more things. Oh, okay. Should I bring the marshmallows with me? Oh. Huh? <laughs> we have a bag of Lucky Charms. We've got a fire going, so we can make s'mores. Do you know how to make a s'more? I do. Um, we can bring Albie and he can help. Is Albie brown? Because we'll need two brown, two black, and then white in the middle. Albie, is maroon okay? <laughs> what kind of did you do? Hey Oprah, I, I came across uh, something great on Facebook. They they had uh, amazing of instead of using graham crackers to use Oreos and melt chocolate and a marshmallow between an Oreo sandwich. Oh, you plebeian! You don't know how to do a marshmallow sandwich. Let me explain it to you. It's called a smorio. First, you can make two cakes. After you make the two cakes, you get some marshmallows. Now, I don't mean those store-bought bullshit marshmallows. You go and buy a bag of sugar, you burn the crap out of it, you put it between the two cakes. Then you have it served on two naked twinks. Oh my. We have no rating, by the way. I would like to have s'more of that. Tell me, is Bucktown there? Is Bucktown around? Hey, I believe Buck, he is. Hey, Bucktown, Bucktown yeah. you want to come up to the mic? Yeah. Bucktown, can you hear me? 
Yeah. I was wondering wow. if you liked the black keys or the white keys more. I like them mixed up. Ooh. <laughs> so you know my recipe for s'mores already. Oh, yeah. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Bucktown. <laughs> Tell me, huh? how many little white keys did you have last night? Uh, about 60. <laughs> Along Buck with down. about 28 black keys. <laughs> You're a slut. <laughs> well, gee, thanks. <laughs> and as always, be flat. <laughs> I must say, our night together was amazing. He came into my room and played beautiful music to me. Then he stopped eating baked beans and we got down to business. <laughs> he also plays the trumpet. Is this your cup of uh, I'll get the dinner. So you're doing this from a room at the Anthrocon then, right? Yeah, we're, we're over in the Westmoreland room. If you guys are in the hallway, come on over. If anybody is in the hallway, come on in. We'd love to see you. Yes, you'll probably get a car. <laughs> I like to give away cars. That way you can drive to my show. So... No, I'm on the toilet right now. I had a lot of s'mores. It doesn't flush anymore. Did you know the Western toilets, they're powerful enough to take care of anything but not Oprah shit? <laughs> I'm going to need a plunger up here. Do you know what a plunger is? A plunger is a twink with a really long arm. And every time he sticks it in, he goes... Oh... Know your role. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oprah, you are giving away a car here uh, in the Westmoreland at the uh, Radio Universe Rabbit Hole. Panel. I am. I am giving away a car. It's it's wonderful, and I wanted to put it underneath everyone's seats, but well, they're furry, so I was afraid that somebody who came in and took up three seats would end up in here. So, <laughs> what? We're furries. Thank you. I'm on my way there, too. I've been fat and skinny so many times that I don't actually have a weight. It's just a mean. <laughs> I can make fat jokes because Alkali is fucking gigantic. <laughs> is Alkali out there? Um, I don't know. He seems to have stepped away for a moment. I guess he'll be back in a bit. No, no, I think he's out there. He dresses in a Hawaiian shirt and dresses up like a dragon. Oh, yeah. Who was that? Who's lying last night? Oh, I never go to oh, that. It's so. A few folks. Oh what? my god. What was that? I never go to Who's Lie. Oh. All that improvisation. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a lot of silliness. And silliness debauchery. doesn't even begin to, and they don't have cars. Yeah, they they just have a lot of debauchery. <laughs> Two years ago, there was someone naked on the stage. What? <laughs> <laughs> it was so depressing and awesome. That was comedy. <laughs> What's going on out there? Apparently, uh, Alkali has no... I'm sorry. Um, LB has, Apparently, LB has no... They band. lied to me. I want to give away that car. Can I give away the car? Sure, go yes, first. I'm going to give the car away to ticket number 543, oh my, 017. 543-017. Did you I, get a car? I think it's on the back, actually, the ticket. How do you have our tickets? How do I have your tickets? Yeah. So the twink that was reaching into the toilet got all the way down to your room. Oh, I see that. His name is Plunge. Oh, okay. <laughs> er. So is there a name on the back? Oh, this name's written on it too. Well, Lottie fucking die. I'm laying on the ground. There's no light. Reku? I have no idea. I'm, I'm going to teleport this down to you. Beat me up, car. Oh, all the blood has rushed to my head. <laughs> I think I need some hand sanitizer. All right, it's uh, R R O O. Oh, that's mine. Hey, Congratulations, yeah. you won a car. And you win at math also. Congratulations. <laughs> Come on down for your free car. Some assembly required. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure if you're as rich as I am, you could just hire a bunch of people to build that. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All the
blood is in my brain right now. <laughs> so, Oprah, since you're usually in Chicago, what have you been doing in Pittsburgh lately? Besides oh. uh, hiding with twinks. Well, I heard that there was some kind of a holiday special going on where a bunch of people got into very warm costumes, overheated, went to the hospital, and then said, that's cool. <laughs> so I wanted to check it out for myself, and I must say, the furry, they're amazing. I'm going to have them on my show. Remember bodyguards? How I used to have bodyguards in the front? I don't need bodyguards anymore. I'll just put furries out there. No one will ever come near me again. <laughs> the stench lines will keep them yes, away. Yes. I'll say they probably smell more interesting. I need, I need to know, do fursuiters shower in the suits? They Good, because you Apparently should seriously so. start. Take some fucking detergent in there and go to town. Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> I just want to see this now. I want to see a bunch of fursuiters in a hot tub and people throwing detergent at them. <laughs> I'm going to put one of you in a dishwasher. <laughs> You're a saucier well, bunch. You have your choice of a bird, a fox, or a tiger. There's a bird, a fox, and a tiger out there? Yes. Shouldn't they be attacking each other? <laughs> oh, hold on. You said fox. Shouldn't they be fucking each other? Whoa. <laughs> you said fox. I have nothing to follow that up with, sorry. <laughs> I'm starting to see double. <laughs> Laying behind a stage is very difficult. <laughs> it makes you say things like twinks or plungers. <laughs> Apparently you fell through the floor. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that fat. <laughs> the stage can support my fat ass, you know. Yeah, I fell through one time and all of a sudden, I was doing a show in LA. I went out there, I sat down in the chair. 32nd floor, 31st floor, 30th floor, 29th floor, it just keeps going like this. 28th floor. 27th floor was made of stone. That one wasn't too bad. I didn't fall through that right away. 26th floor. <laughs> See, there was a delay. Did the swing pool eventually stop you? No, the Twinks never stop me. They always want to keep going. <laughs> Do you know a word that no Twink knows? What's that? Damn it, I was hoping one of you was going to say no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm so glad I could be on your show, but I'm starting to see double. <laughs> Thank you very much, Oprah. Thanks for coming in. Oh, it's always a pleasure, dear. I'll see you later. All right, take care. Good. Have a good night. Oh. That was Oprah. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know who else was down there, but thank you. <laughs> I think it was the car. You know, someone else I, I would like to have come to Anthrocon one of these days, if ever possible. Maybe. Who knows? George Decay. We gotta get him here one of these days. Oh, yeah. He fit in perfect. It, He's like my favorite gay great <clears throat> my favorite gay grandpa. He likes comic eats. He was, uh, George K was at the Toon Museum last year? He was. Yeah. He was there, and I think Joe, Mo Joe Walsh got to meet him. Joe Walsh, yeah. I, I saw that picture. Yes. You were right next to her face. Yeah, that's where she had home. Yeah, I... Gates McFadden uh, oh. played Dr. Beverly Crusher in Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm not a Trekkie. I don't know these things. Yeah. I'm not either. I, I'm the Trekkie. Who's a Star Trek fan? So, you two disappoint me. <laughs> okay. That's it. Yeah. Never too old to learn. Hi, come on in. Come on, come on in and have a come seat. On. Welcome yeah. to the show. By the way, at 250, we're announcing the winner of the Fox and More giveaway CD. Uh, the uh, funds are going to go towards the charity right after the show. So, any kind of donation, you want to give a dollar, you want to give five, whatever you want. You can get a ticket. 
Yeah. And birds, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right, think of the birds. And they have a couple of bats, and they have a sloth. It's kind of cool. Went over to the aviary on Wednesday. <laughs> they don't have any foxes. However, they did have a mouse running around in the desert area. They, they did. They had uh, mice running around in... It was uh, just one, but yeah. Well, a mouse running around <laughs> in one of the uh, exhibits. Hmm. I was like, eh. It picked the right part of the exhibit. <clears throat> so let's see. Um, we're going to do a karaoke game. Uh, Blitz, you want to come up? Cool. Uh, and uh, who else did... Alkali, did you want to play or did you want to take a break? Okay. <laughs> I'll explain the rules. Ladies and gentlemen, if you watch Funded Puppet Show, this is Blitz. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to give up my seat, but I'm going to be on the side here. And who else? We're going to need two more people. Raise your hand if you want to play. You get to get, guess the artist, the song, and you get to try to sing to the song. So anybody want to play? Raise your hand. All right, you get to. You guys get to pick two victims. Go for it. Well, you're you're answer guy 101, right? I I know you. Hello. Yes. Well, let's see. I I had completely forgotten that I was logged into my IRC channel and I have logged off. Oh well. I think if we if we can manage to get like an internet connection this next year, if we manage to have that. So I figure we'll have uh, two chairs up here. And yeah. Thank you. Did you knock over? Wow, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> uh oh. All right, so who do we have playing with Alkali and Blitz? Blitz, go first. Go first. Everybody's like, okay, we got Anthro guy and. Okay. Do not we, we be. Can have, we can have him come up. Sure. Why don't you? Yeah. Come do up? not be shy. Do not be shy. Uh, uh, shit. Yeah. All right, so. So, you want to share mics? We can, we can share mics, yeah. We, have, we should have three mics, so let me play these over. You guys can have a mic. Yeah. You guys can have a mic. Mic so we're doing the, we'll we're doing the mic you shuffle. Only you know what you guys are going to do. We're going to need uh, two more chairs. <coughs> I eat more spit out. So, which way? Oh, I, I should have asked Oprah if she likes uh, Lucky Charms. I know, Oprah, do you like Lucky Charms? <laughs> <laughs> if you would have poured that in my mouth while I was laying there, I think I would have died. <laughs> you would have eaten plenty. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sugar. All right, so what we're going to do is your name is going to be your buzzer. Um, we'll have two teams, so let's see. Uh, Alkali, you buzz in with your name, and Blitz, you buzz in with your name, and you can ask for help with your teammate, or the other team can steal. So if you're like, uh, then the other person can use their name. We all know that the majority of furries only has a diet of four things. Meat, sugar, more meat, booze, and meat. And meat. <laughs> meat can be interpreted however you wish. There you go. <laughs> And Pop Tarts, that's so okay. And uh, what is it? Um, Mountain Dew. There we go. So you can name artists. Uh, this is going to be based off points. So who wants to be scorekeeper? Uh, you want to be scorekeeper? Sword keeper? I'll do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will be the sword keeper. You want to be the sword keeper? Yes. yes. Okay. So, uh, to throw out credits, uh, this was inspired by Woody Wilcox. So uh, this will be points based. I have 11 songs. You can do like best four out of five or whatever. So. I have, let's see, so we're going to do uh, artists, the name of the song, and try to sing it if you can. You can home it if you want. Okay. So, Sonica, you're going to be scorekeeper. All right. Are you guys ready? Yep. All right. All right. So, oh, that's loud. Team, what team? All right. So, sure. we have Team Alkali. <laughs> team Alkali. Team Alkali. And Team Blitz. <laughs> team Blitz. <laughs> right, I'm waiting for Justin. Here we go. So, I can turn it up to like Team A. Okay, that so works. You, you can get up to three <laughs> points, and the other team can steal. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. All right, All right. first one. Alkali. This song is just six words long. This song is just six words other long. Other team, you want to steal? No, do it right. Uh, isn't it a, my, just, I've got my mind set on you by a, I oh, know this isn't hey, that. I got this. He's a lawyer. I this know. Is, this is Take On Me by AHA. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they start the same. You cheated. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
presentation okay. <laughs> but now you gotta try to sing it
think I mixed up the words again. I don't know what. Okay, good enough. That's why he just sits here and he makes them up. <laughs> <laughs> Mumbling works when it's a rap song. Feel good. Feel good. When the windmill for the something. Uh, Blitz. Ah. <laughs> did I beat you or did I get you? Yeah, Alkali. Uh, sharp Dressed Man, ZZ Top. Yep. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Steve Miller Band, and it's called The Joker. Yes! <laughs> it's not called Space Cowboy. It's no, not called The Strangers in Love. It's not called Maurice or Wink Wink Wink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of some other, it's like every single song they've ever wrote, but it's not called any of the songs they've ever wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of just rushed through it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just Look, there's fake cowboys or other things. Big old Jedi Alana. <laughs> I'm a joker. I'm a smoker. I'm a midnight choker. Take my love and I'm a I love that none of us have it on the same I'm a sailor. <laughs> When Japan is on the run. Okay, I like that one. All right, number seven. I know this one. Oh. Anthro guy. You want to say it? I don't want to miss a thing by Bon Jovi. You're close. Oh, okay. Close. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> What's the actual name of the song? Bon Jovi living on a prayer.
a few octaves. Is that, is that cheating? It's okay. Yeah. Oh, great. I think our vocal range is like crap to kind of crap. So. Yeah, I'm, g- I'm going to get points to both of you guys for the vocals. That was awesome. <laughs> Anther guy! You wanna get it? That's yours. Oh, I won? No, no, you got it. Anther guy got it. Yeah. Bliss, so there you go. I got tight versions. I'm nervous you say it. Don't Stop Believing by Journey. (laughs) Oh my god, I love Journey. Especially when (laughs) amateurs sing it. Fox having a toy? <laughs> Something about South Detroit. Ain't going anywhere. Welcome to AnthroCon. This convention is going on. We've got a lot of gays and they all wear fur. We look at a blog of fail. 90% of you wear tails! Is this not the beginning? Oh! 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 I'm not wearing the hat. <laughs> That's why my voice is so shitty. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's the hat. <laughs> you can borrow mine. I don't think it works that way. <laughs> my hat. No, I'm now back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to produce it. For those of you who want to go deaf, I'm uh, going to be producing a CD soon. <laughs> <laughs> It's called I Hate My Life and You Should Hate Yours. <laughs> oh. Alright, who's on next? Alkali. Billy Joel Piano Man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love that song. Now sing it. <laughs> oh, uh, feel free to change up the lyrics. It's a harmonica. It's a harmonica. <laughs> Are you, sh- are you sure it's corn? <laughs> <laughs> Son, I don't know the words to the song, even though I hear it all the time. So I'm going to try to say some words, one of which might rhyme. <laughs> Bread in my jar is a line in this song <laughs> And it comes out in the middle I was using a fake harmonica But I'm much better at the fake fiddle People across the hall right now, you think that this is funny, but the one thing that you don't know, 20 people walked in the room, asshole, so take that. And with that song, we are tied. Team A and Team B, five points apiece. Oh, wow. <laughs> How did that even happen? I don't know. You got scorekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> we got one last song here. Uh, I thought we're going to. You got two out. more. And I got a couple more. Nice. Okay. Blitz.
That's Van Halen, and it's jump. Something, something, something. Jump! <laughs> I get up. I smell jump. <laughs> All I know is this is the song they play before Panama. <laughs> I'm a rabbit, I'll just jump. <laughs> jump, 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 jump. And one more, here we go. Alkaline. Margaritaville, Jimmy Buffett. Yes. Yeah. We were tied 6 6 now. <laughs> oh no. 6 6. I don't know what happened. He's just marking the paper. They got an extra point for the, the presentation. Oh, that's. He shows you the point card, it's just a drawing. <laughs> it's like Pinkie Pie taking notes, it's just random pictures of like stars and suns and grass. Thanks, Pinkie Pie. <laughs> I don't know this one, not at all. I don't waste it away again when I'm down in my luck. Uh, then Xander came in the room. I actually watching the sun bake. Yeah, I don't even know like the tune to this one. I all of the song. tourists covered in oil. I'm so glad you know this one. All the tourists covered in oil. On okay. my punch board swing. And I think I mixed up the words again. <laughs> But at least they're in paradise. paradise. <laughs> they all turn out the same when he sings them. Five o'clock somewhere. Oh yeah, you knew that one. Searching wine shirts and parrots. <laughs> Searching for my lost shaker of salt. Salt. <laughs> salt. I have a tiebreaker if you guys want to try this. Let's do it. Right, oh boy. Here we go. It's one of my favorite songs. Anthrax. Oh. It's Pompeii by Bastille. Nice! Right. I love Bastille. I just heard this song. This whole album is just like, really? This blew me away. I heard this album when I was born. I was lost with my own divine. Many days fell away with nothing to hold And the walls kept crumbling down in the city that we love Great clouds fall over the hills bringing darkness from above But when you close your eyes, does it almost feel like nothing? Team Blitz oh. won by one point, so it was seven to six. But both of you did fantastic. <laughs> Give a round of applause, okay. Alkali and Blitz. They <laughs> got Xander and Anthro Guy, one one for also joining us. Oh man, you guys are awesome. Well, we were gonna do Spitzer Swallows, but we didn't get enough food, so all we had was like uh, marshmallows. If you guys just want to eat some Lucky Charms marshmallows, just walk up and grab some. I, there's so many here, I don't. We know could what make some all. terrible s'mores out of that. Yeah, we could. Uh, we could. Lucky Charms s'mores. Do you think that would sell? I wonder. 
All right. So anyway. Chocolate. Ooh, chocolate. Remember, folks, that your donations to the show today are going to go straight to the National Aviary, the Anthrocon charity. Birds. Has anybody had a chance to go out and see the National Aviary in Pittsburgh? It's like right across the bridge. Guys, I I'm going to go give this to the other panel that we annoyed. All right. And we profusely apologize to the panel next door to us. We do. Yep. But not really. <laughs> <laughs> Tickets for money and any amount. Any amount. I don't care if it's 50 cents a buck, if it's a penny you found it on the ground. Any, any kind of money, you get yourselves a ticket and you'll be uh, up for a drawing. There Remember. is a uh, free co – well, s s you have to donate money to the raffle any amount. It goes to the National Aviary Anthrocon 2014's charity of choice. And uh, one of the lucky people in this room right now who uh, enters in the raffle will win this free copy of Fox Amore's Come Find Me that uh, debuted this weekend at Anthrocon. Uh, and one, some, some, one of you is going to walk out of here with this. Signed by Fox and Moore, Amadia, and uh, Alexander James Adams. All right. Let's, let's do the microphone shuffle again. Microphone shuffle, yeah. All right, so any of you have been out to the National Aviary, I, I wish there was a way for me to get uh, pictures up on the computer from my iPhone. Maybe there is. It's, I normally connect mine to a Mac. Uh, I, I have an iPhone. Do you have iTunes installed in your PC? Uh, no. No? Oh, what? You don't? Oh, no, then I can't. I, then I can't put I this stuff in my phone. Oh, well. No. Oh, well. Uh, but you guys got to go out there and check because they, they have, like, some of the most beautiful birds out there. They have flying foxes at the National Aviary. Oh, they have bats. I thought it was just uh, birds, but they apparently have bats, too. I don't think I have any pictures of the bats. Yeah, um, I, I had a few of them. I can't get them onto your computer. I should have thought of that earlier. But anyway, they're just the, the cutest things you ever see. Anybody who says they're afraid of bats, they're not terrible. It, these things are literally, they look like a fox with large eyes and cute ears. And they're we, just we fluffy. We found this guy, and we don't know what it is. Yeah, okay, so this is one of the pictures. Now, I was doing a, a bird selfie here. It's, it's on my phone. It, I, it really did not care. Yeah, you could you could get right up close to them, and that that was it. It, it was, yeah, it was right by the AC, and it's like, oh, and then we saw this. Yeah, what uh, rotate the image? Oh yes, uh, there was some baby ducklings that was sitting out on the the rocks out there. So they're so cute, aren't they cute? I'm not sure what type of ducks they were. But it's like, ah, oh, babies. Yep. Uh, and they had uh, flamingos out there. There's a couple of the, the lorikeets, I believe. Um, we had a chance to go out to feed the lorikeets. Those were really cool. You, uh, you donate three bucks and you get this little cup of nectar and uh, they'll, they'll drink from, from you. Um, I didn't know this, but I talked to Mindy Tiger and she said that if the, one of the lorikeets jumps on you or, or lands on your arm, you get a pin or something like that. That, that I didn't know. So, so. They, they were all high on their sugar and out, so they're all kind of up high. Oh, yeah. Hi. I have a mic. Yeah, so they feed them, and then they go take a nap, and then they said they were like a three-year-old. They just were like, oh, we're hungry again. So they do limited feedings. Yeah. And if you guys get a chance to uh, visit the National Aviary, yeah, if you have chilling. not visited already, please do before you leave Pittsburgh. It is a wonderful place to see. Yeah. You go inside, uh, a typical adult pass is like 14 bucks. They put a little wrist strap on you. Uh, there's other events there that you can prepay for. They got uh, live shows. Um, in these exhibits, these aren't your typical um, bird exhibits. When you go inside, you're actually in the same area where the birds are at. That's why we were able to get pictures this close. You can actually interact and involve with these. They won't let you touch them, but you'll get really close to them. It's, it's, I mean, if they, if they want to sit on you, then... That's fine. Yeah, um, but watch overhead because they will fly over you, and they do leave interesting things behind. Yeah, one of the one of the guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, well, we're, we're, there's one with you and the penguin in here. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you don't leave interesting things behind there, Victor. All right. Oh yeah, then there's this guy. Apparently, he likes to show off for people. Yeah, th th this guy here was acting like. 
my beak is stuck in the rope. Help me, help me, please. And we eventually found out that it's just an act that this bird does, that he acts all kind of like stuck and helpless, and that's how he gets attention from, from people. So I, I, Yeah, I think I called him the, uh, the aviary attention whore because whenever there are people around him, he will just hang by the rope by his beak every time. And then we saw a crown pigeon that looked like it killed over and died. Apparently that's called sunbathing. Yeah, the, the bird was literally like, like this on the ground. Yeah, it just like looked like a... I, I didn't know that bird sunbathed like that. It was just weird. It was doing the flop. Yep. Shag. It is whatever you want it to be. Come on in. Oh, okay. All right, have fun with that. Yeah, we, we won't be at that panel. That's okay. <laughs> yep. If, if you want to do the, the the weird karaoke that we're we're doing. Actually, book down. Do you want to play another tune? <laughs> yes, actually. Are you up for it? Actually. Keyboard up. cat, show it up. Keyboard cat, buck down, tiger, take it away.
Bucktown Tiger, you are just amazing. We want to interview you. And we yeah, actually want to interview a couple different people today. Bucktown, if you want to come up and have you a seat. Take a break? You want to take it's a break? You. See it? Get some uh, water or something if, you, if you're thirsty. Do you want any water? Let's see. I'll get you some water. I got some water for you. Yeah? Oh, okay. We couldn't do this show without our fans. We couldn't have Anthrocon without its attendees. And we couldn't have great music without artists as amazing as Bucktown Tiger and Fox Amore and Rhubarb the Bear and uh, just, you know, all sorts of amazing talent. So we want to get a, ask you a couple of questions or give the audience a chance to, you know, ask questions yeah, uh, about Bucktown idea. Tiger. Yeah, I think your straw is kind of bending there. Anybody out there have any questions for Bucktown Tiger at all? I'm just talking about curiosity. Uh, here's one for you from me. What got you? In, what got you started into um, playing the piano? And when did you start doing it in costume? Uh, well, I started playing in the piano back about 1992, 93. So probably about 21 years off and on, mostly off. I uh, had ambitions of being a, a professional baseball player, and it didn't work out. <laughs> so, around college, I started actually playing, you know, seriously, because, uh, you know, engineering studies was really stressful. And um, when I found the furry fandom in 2005, I uh, never dreamed of actually being a fursuiter. Um, I thought it was, like, too hot, low heat tolerance. But uh, I, I saw a uh, fursuiter by the name of uh, Flair Starfire in, uh, in 2007, and I saw him playing piano in, uh, in first suit and I thought that was really cool and he really inspired me and um, you know I uh, got my first suit a few months later in 2007 and I've been playing in suit more or less ever since just you know just as much as I can because I really love doing it and you guys are awesome. Well, thank you Bucktown uh, we we all appreciate everything that you do and uh, we appreciate your talent and it's I, I, I know it's not easy to play in uh, in first suit and that's what makes you. Uh, that's what makes you so unique. It's magical. And it, I, it, it's awesome. And uh, we all love you, uh, Bucktown. <laughs> you can't take him home with you. He won't fit in your luggage. <laughs> oh, actually, um, shout out for you. If you like Bucktown's music, he has a few CDs down in the dealer's den. He you does. can catch him after the show. Go ahead and go check his music out. Please, yeah. please. I want to your stuff. I implore you to check out Bucktown Tiger's music. And if you can't do that in the dealer's den, where can they get your music online? Uh, well, I'm on Rabbit Valley, for those of you that use Rabbit, Rabbit oh, Valley. Oh, Ra that works. I'm there. I'm also um, on iTunes. I'm on CD Baby. Uh, use Spotify. Uh, my music's on Spotify as well. And um, uh, my website's BucktownTiger.com, which sorely needs updates. And uh, I'm also on Fur Affinity and Twitter, and I occasionally even use the dreaded site known as Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, all Bucktown Tiger except Facebook because they are so those Bucktown Tiger tunes on Facebook. Are but, you on the Twitters? Yeah, yeah, Bucktown Tiger on Twitter. At Bucktown Tiger. There you go. It's the same thing with Fur Affinity, just Bucktown Tiger? Oh, uh, yeah, same thing. Or, or Shop Wrecker, right? Well, well, Bucktown Tiger. Oh. Um, and, and on, usually it's Tuesday nights, I do a uh, web stream mm -hmm. on, uh, on First Stream. Um, that's the uh, Bucktown Tiger channel there. Um, Tuesday night starting, we start around 9 Eastern usually. And um, we go until I pass out, which is usually around 1 a.m. <laughs> Eastern, 2 a.m. Eastern. And uh, we work on all our new music there. We also do rehearsals, uh, car reviews. Uh, I rant about politics and other stuff. <laughs> and uh, it's just a lot of fun. So uh, definitely hope to see you there. All right. <laughs> Cool. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you very much. Bucktown Thanks, Tiger, Bucktown. give it up for him, please. Uh, I'll see you next. Oh, thanks, yeah, Bucktown. Thank you. I'm being massaged by a tiger. This is awesome. Uh, I want to see if we can invite Blitz uh, from our audience up on stage. We'll interview him. Blitz from Fun Profit Show. You're a lot taller in person. Yeah. <laughs> Less fluffy. <laughs> so your, your favorite drink is ginger ale. Yes. Uh, but there's an interesting thing about ginger ale that uh, it, it's, it helps upset stomachs. Uh, I think the oatmeal calls it magic sky juice. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You got water for you. <laughs> so how long have you been part of the Funday Poppet Show? I've been a part of it, I think it's a little over four years now. 
I started doing it as soon as once I moved into Yappy's place. And uh, then I was just basically a regular on until then. I moved out recently just to be a little closer to work. But I still am on the show every so often when they want me. So, Cool. Well, what uh, what got you into the character? I mean, what what inspired you to be like the German Shepherd then? That's... <laughs> the story about being the Shepherd was <laughs> during the first two or three weeks that I was there and we started doing the show, I was just randomly messing around with all the puppets. And the only ones I could actually get my hands in were the German Shepherd and like one or two others. And I was just playing around with that. And initially... They were everybody on the show was like, "Oh yeah, that's uh, Brunhilde. She's the the German sex therapist." So the first time I used the shepherd, I had to do her voice the entire time. So I read the channel in the German sex therapist voice. Oh God! And what does that sound the, like? As the time progressed, I just started using my voice more and more, and the story, the character of Blitz just developed from there. And we ended up turning into the original character. Brunhilde was his mother. Oh so. God! So what does Brunhilde sound like? Oh, she was like, oh, um, it's like a mixture between like Miss uh, Doctor Ruth and like oh, a little bit of German accent. I, 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 it's kind of hard to think about it because I kept losing character when I was doing it. <laughs> I, I think I would. I'd probably just lose. Her. It's like oh, ZZ Top has very great legs, <laughs> and then they kept yeah. changing the names, and it was like, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen. Who does the ZZ Top has great legs? I haven't seen ZZ Top, Top in months. I. Uh... If anybody uh, here uh, actually frequents Pop at IRC, I can kind of tell everybody who ZZ Top has uh, great legs or ugly legs or whatever legs you? at the time. He's a channel admin. Yes, I, I am a channel admin of uh, Pop at IRC, the uh, IRC channel that uh, Fund Aid Puppet Show uses and runs themselves. Um, that was Pyrofox. I don't know if anybody out oh, there is okay. familiar with uh, Pyrofox. We just, we just scroll the names through Yappy. will do a screen cap and get everything. Yeah, yeah. So that that was uh, that was actually Pyrofox. Oh, okay. There we go. Um, what was the? There was like the one song. Oh, the Tijuana Taxi. Yeah. The Tijuana Taxi. I I feel so sorry for you now. Every time they make you get out in front of the camera and do <laughs> it that. Was only because I said I can do that. And I should have. All the reason it even started. I should have grabbed the music for that for you here. They played the original music video on the show. Oh God. And they got to that one point where those two guys just doing that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that's not hard. And everybody's like, yeah, it's hard. Like, no, it's not. It's just three moves and you just do it and beat. And they're like, oh, well, then go out there and do it. So I did. And it's become a staple. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll see if I can, uh, I can pull it up. Oh, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> of course, Buckdown plays it. <laughs> hey, Bucktown. <laughs> well, well, of course, there was the whole El Pacino Pio uh, oh, thing, and the I dance like that song. goes with that. I instigated that. I instigated that. <laughs> yeah. I the song is like, hey, I like there's it. movements to this? And I sat in my room for like 10 minutes as they talked about something else, and I ran out into the kitchen and said, I can do the dance now. <laughs> uh, and that's why I just went crazy on the show. El Pacino Pio just gets overplayed now. I'm going to see if I can pull it up, actually. <laughs> Are you over? Oh, my God. I'm not gonna dance though. <laughs> oh, the German? What what's the, the oh, most yeah. fun aspect of Fun Day Puppet Show that you can think of, Buzz? I love it when we just when we just go off each other. Like uh Poink and I, we we'll just banter back and forth. He'll insult me and I'll say something back and he'll be like, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> just throw him for a loop. <laughs> just yeah. throw him for a loop, just have fun with it. <laughs> I don't yeah. know which one that's that's It's original. like a dance remix version. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that sounds like a dance remix, yeah. All It'd right. cool to see some lasers with that. Well, Blitz, <laughs> I, I hope to see you on Funday Puppet Show more often. I know you're kind of like, uh, you know, every once in a while you're there, yeah. like every other weekend or something like that. It's basically when they want me on now, so. Okay. Yeah, hopefully I'll have to get these days and I'll come down to Florida and come see you guys again. Mm-hmm. It'll and, be fun. and we love seeing you on the show, Blitz. We actually really do enjoy you. In fact, you were one of my, my personally, one of my favorite pop pets on the show. So give Blitz a round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and uh, well, I, I'll buy you a ginger ale. Huh? 
I'll buy you ginger ale. <laughs> All right. Uh, one last person I wanted to interview is Alkali here, this uh, fine, tall gentleman who, whose height, I think, rivals that of cheetahs. Anybody knows Cheetah the Tall German? I, I need a theme song to pick for you. I got YouTube open. <laughs> if you could pick a theme yeah. song for yourself, what would it be? My, my personal theme song? Yes. The Cockroach That Ate Cincinnati. Okay, I'll look for that. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, so my friends made me walk into a wedding to I'm Too Sexy. Okay, that'll work. Yeah, they're assholes. <laughs> Oh, God. It's like, oh, I'm too sexy for my depression. <laughs> what are, you, are you seriously looking up that song? Yes. It's an old Dr. Demento song. Oh, that version? Yeah. Oh, oh my God, okay. it's fantastic. I, I still listen to my old Dr. Demento stuff when I'm driving. Oh, it's, man. it's fantastic. So you are the main host of Whose Lion my Is love, It Anyway? Too sexy for my love, love's going to leave. Oh, my God. So, and when did that, uh, whose line is it anyway start? When did that start? <laughs> um, Semjay uh, oh, yes, actually yes, started it uh, one year before I joined on, and uh, she did it with another host, and it went really well, but uh, they were missing, uh, there was just a few steps missing. And I ran Content Removed, which was my improv troupe. Uh, oh, we were very small. We just kind of went out there, had fun, did a lot of bars, uh, did a lot of stuff for the LARP that I do. And so she brought me in, and then everyone realized I was fucking insane. So once that got out, yeah, that started picking up. And uh, awesome. now we just did a 400-person panel last night, and I'm still tired from you, Cycle. Yeah, that well, panel was amazing. Actually, since Oprah wasn't here to see a show of hands, who was at last night's Who's Lion? Well, thank you guys very much for supporting it. I, I love doing that panel, and uh, you guys... <laughs> Uh, furries are the best audience. It, it's that simple. There's I no other way to put it. I personally wish I could have stuck out uh, around for that panel, but the registration was just uh, eating my face off. Yeah, I, I, I run a count as well. I yeah. understand. Okay. <laughs> yeah, how's that working out? Like uh, nothing works. Words? What? That's how cons work. Oh, nothing that's works. right. Nothing works. Say yeah. hello. Welcome to con. That Wait. doesn't work. Okay. You know, we, we basically just wing it in the background. You know, up in front, when, when we're all up on stage, we're scrambling to try to find the right things to say at the right moments. When we're working behind the scenes, we're scrambling. We're working our butts off. Um, it, I, just to point out, it's, it, it's not KageCon. Whoever says it's KageCon, no. It's, it's all of our con. You know, our volunteers, our staff, our members, our attendees, you know, every little bit of it. The whole shebang is from you guys. We couldn't do this without you. So no single person on the board or any staff member can claim responsibility. It's a team effort, and we work really hard. So, and You guys are fantastic. This is an amazingly run con. I, I can't even imagine running this, a con of this. Like, so we, we should pimp your con. What is your con? What uh, is your con? My con is uh, First Squared. Uh, we, we take place in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Uh, it's uh, really close to Milwaukee. As the last week in February, first week in March, three day convention. And uh, this year's theme, because I am a giant nerd, <laughs> is Lizards and Labyrinths, which is going to be a role playing tabletop DD style convention. Nice. That's uh, actually we, drivable for me. Yeah, hey, you, you, check you it should out. go. It'd be awesome. Yeah, if, if I can it, get the time off, I'd probably be able to. Yeah, Wisconsin speaks snow, and Minnesota speaks snow. She yes, we specifically put it during the snow so that when the entire hotel smells of furry <laughs> and butt stuff, we just open up all the doors, and the uh, cold winter air flows through, and all of a sudden, it smells nice in there again, <laughs> and pisses him off to no end. Yeah. I've got one last question for you. The top hat, the coat, when did you start doing that? It was kind of your <laughs> shtick. Um, so that's actually, uh, it, to me, it's an interesting story. Um, I've had the same job my entire life. I've been, I've been in the same industry my entire life. I've been a stockbroker or something along those lines since I was 15. Uh, and this jacket, and it's why it has so many pockets, is my old trading jacket from when I was 18 years old. Wow. And I've done a few. I mean, I've got a friend that, that, you know, like the sleeves are still, I mean, I really should go get it done again, but I'm worried about it falling apart. Uh, and yeah, I've, I've, uh, I wore this thing on the trading floor for four years while I was down there. When I moved up to the office as a going away present, they let me keep it. Oh, wow. So yeah, I, I've had it forever. I figured that's why the uh, back, 
I don't know, uh, when I wear the blue shirt, it's really easy to notice, but when I'm wearing my uh, darker shirt, you can't, but the back uh, is entirely back. mesh. Oh. Okay. Uh, it's because when we're on the floor, we're around, uh, you know, a hundred people are in a, a hole in the ground. So that's one of our ways of trying to keep cool. And, uh, it was always kind of neat to me, and I really liked the jacket. Do you still, like, have to shout a lot? Say you, again? Do you shout a lot in your profession? You know, I, I still shout a lot, but nothing compared to the floor. Like, uh, when, when I was down there, I, I you literally stopped being able to lose your voice because you just screamed all day for... Wow. Oh, yeah, it was it was awesome. That's actually um, uh, my uh, parents. They always used to tell me. They, they got really angry because this is not my, uh, my given voice. Like, this is just from screaming on the floor for years. I never had a deep voice like this until I went and did that. But now my voice, uh, you, when you do that down there, we're trying to communicate with hand signals to people on the other side of the room, and you need to get their attention. So people have been on the floor long enough, you'll notice that they don't have just a, a, a distinguishable voice, they have a throwable voice. That's why when I'm on stage just talking to somebody, you can hear me out there because my voice just yeah, you don't need a mic. No, I very rarely use a mic because I have the tendency to blow off speakers. Oh, man. It's, it's, so this is your quiet voice. This is my indoor voice. Your yeah, indoor it, voice. it really angers him. Well, Alco, I thank you so much uh, for coming. Thanks, Bucktown Tiger. Oh. Uh, thanks to everybody else. And we got one more thing here real quick. We're running a little late. We got to do this raffle thing. Oh. All right, we we got a, We got this uh, nice signed Fox and More CD. And thank you, everybody who donated. Yep. So let me get the. All these CD donations there. are going to the uh, National Aviary Charity. Wait, I need to move all the stuff out of the way. The tickets and the donations are in the same spot. Oh, so who, who should we give the honor of picking this? Who, who should Fox Ami Azul? Do you want to uh, pick up one of the tickets? <laughs> I don't think I. I don't think he's going to be able to grab here. Uh, he might not be. Yeah. Okay. Someone with dexterity. He's got it. He's got it. He's, he's up. He's got he's, it. He's, he's got, got it. it. Okay. All right. All right. Who is going to win the CD? Who, Who is, is it going to be? Who is going to it get a free copy of Fox and Moore's Come Find Me signed? You got one? All right. Read off the, the ticket. Is? Yeah, come on, come over here, Erica. Okay. Rob Taylor, Blackfoot Ferret. Oh, cool. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're on the team. Awesome. Yes. Oh, oh, oh yes, I, I yes. I called you at the same time. Oh, it's my computer. Oh, it's all right. It's okay. Congratulations. Congrats, man. Enjoy the CD. Uh, Fox and Moore's music is just amazing. All right. So, yeah. And thank you all for your donations. They're going to go straight to the National Aviary Charity. Uh, I have to give the Northside back their box after. Yeah. I borrowed it. Oh, Whoa! Yeah. 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 Yep. Nope. They're all right. Yeah. It, all right. It's, it's all right. Well, it's just water. Who it's cares? water. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate uh, all the support. Thanks oh. to Alkali, Bucktown Tiger, Fox Nelby Azul, who decided to show up. Blitz from the Puppet Show. And uh, I think with, I think it's only right that we have Bucktown Tiger play us off. Play us off, keyboard cat. That's right. Remember, furry isn't just a way of life. We believe it's the best way. Have a good night. Radio Universe in the rabbit hole. Thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful Anthrocon 2014. Thank you all. And dealer's room's open for another hour. Pick up a CD for Buckdown. This has been a radio show that we sat here and talked about crap. <laughs> Have a great rest of your con, everybody. Woo!